It's time for the museum, Siler. Museum? Why are we at a museum? It's time you learned about your culture. Someday you're gonna have to tell your kids. You're white. You don't understand. I am 132nd Cherokee. Do not start with me. Whatever. Go. This is gonna be great. Go! How was it? It was good. I'm sorry, Dad. Thanks. It's okay. Let's go home.
people took on their present form within the body of the earth and ascended through a series of worlds below onto the surface. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom Thomas, and I'm here with a new rendition, a new episode of The Modern Indian. We're here in Santa Fe at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture. And today we are going to investigate the culture and the arts of the Indian. Their hair, their clothing, their ceremonies, their ancestors, and their culture. Here we have a beautiful sculpture entitled Homeward Bound from uh, 1989. As you can see, we have Mary and her little lambs uh, in this beautiful natural landscape. Excuse me, sir, sir, sir. We're doing a mini series here entitled The Modern Indian. And uh, you look to me like a modern Indian who has transcended many generations and lots of time um, in, this, in, this, in this ancestral tribal clothing you're wearing uh, you just stood out to me as, as a as a native as a, as a very a very a very solid uh, native right. specimen um, oh my goodness what take a look at this take a look at this want? look at this beautiful hair look at this beautiful hair it must have been grown for years and years ah, the braid off. is perfect and what does that represent exactly just me you fabulous fabulous uh, um, uh, what is your name sir Philip no 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 uh, your Indian name Philip Jones. Philip Jones cannot be your, your native Indian name. What, what is your native Indian name uh, passed down from Gen S Sir, sir, please don't go, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sir, please. Come back. Damn it. Well, there goes another one. Welcome back. This is our second installment of the mini series, The Modern Indian. I apologize for losing my cool at the end of the first segment. I grabbed some wonderful native maize for lunch and I'm now full and ready to go. Here we are in the lobby, also known as the Hall of Ancestors, if you will. <laughs> We've got a lot, of, a lot of native sculpture and culture. You can kind of feel the vibes of the native Indians coming up through the floor. Lots of spirits here. <sighs> to my left you see, uh, 
a lot of ancestral photography. Uh, what we are really in search of is a live, native, modern Indian. Now we can get a lot of information out of these photos, but well, look at what we have here. Look at what we have here. Excuse me, miss. My name is Tom Thomas, and I'm doing a, a mini-series entitled The Modern Indian. Now, you look like a modern Indian. Could I ask what your name is? Katiri. Katiri. How do you spell that? With the K. With the K. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, I see you're looking at these photographs here. Now, are you by any chance related to any one of these photographs? No, these are decades old. So you're not related to any one of these photographs? No, I'm not. Well, that's very interesting to me because you sure look like you're related to all these people. That's very rude. <laughs> You haven't seen rude, Missy. Excuse me. Okay, I apologize. I apologize. Let, let's move forward. Now, I see that you're dressed in, in a very modern uh, rodeo type attire. Um, now, this belt buckle looks very, very old, and, and maybe even this man is wearing that same belt buckle no. in this picture. Was that passed down from no, generation not. to generation to generation, and no, you carry on the tradition of your people? That's very disrespectful. No. Disrespectful? You don't. Look, look, Miss, I, I apologize. I'm not trying to disrespect you. All I want to know is. Who in these photographs is your great grandmother? No, no That's one. all I want to know. Who are you related no, to? No one. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Hey, don't walk away from me. Excuse me, come back. Cut. Cut. I said cut. Get out of here. Jesus. Hey, everybody. Tom Thomas here one last time. We're going to give this a final shot. I think we're going to get what we need. You know, we're doing our, di our mini documentary, The Modern Indian, and I've got a wonderful buffalo dancer and an elk dancer here that I think we're going to get some great information out. Mr. Buffalo Dancer, could you give me your full name? <laughs> Off to a great start. Uh, uh, Mr. Elk Dancer, what is that around your neck? It's a turquoise necklace. Oh, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Let's look Tom, at that. Tom, 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 Tom. Yes. Hi. How are you? Uh, Joshua, I arranged uh, your press passes for today. Oh, thanks, Joshua. Yes. Great to meet you. Say hi to the camera. Welcome. Then. Hi, camera. Yeah. Uh, so. Were you just interviewing our mannequins? Uh, I might have been. I might have been. Uh, okay. It's been a bit of a rough day, Joshua, I have to uh, admit. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I ran into uh, a couple of, you know, we are doing this this documentary, uh, this this mini-series. Oh, uh, very excited uh, for it. And the Modern Indian. Really appreciate you thinking of the museum. Absolutely. Actually, I, yeah. I appreciate Thank you me. having me. Sure. So, I'm just a little confused because I ran into a young Indian man out mm. on the plaza today, and I asked him what his Native American name was, and he told me Philip Jones. Now, can you explain that to me? Tom, it, it, well, that's, he probably told you that's his name because that's his name. I don't understand. I mean, I was under the impression that all Native Americans had a Native American name. Running water, dances uh, with bears, flies no, with the no. fish, I don't know. Uh, no, Wait, no not, not today, no, 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 Tom. How, okay. how much time have you spent in the museum so far? Uh, it's irrelevant. I, I don't, whatever. I, I've been trying to get an interview. You know, I also ran into uh -huh. another young Indian woman. Uh, her name was, I don't Excuse me. Her name was Satiri or Satirical or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, she was in the Hall of Photography there and looking at all the photos on the yeah, wall. Yeah, photography. Huh? It's beautiful. It's Great beautiful. Exhibit, and yes. I asked her who on the wall she was related to. And she said, no one. Oh. Uh, I don't understand that either oh. because as far as I know, all Indians are related to each other. Is that not right? Oh, Tom. Can I, can I explain something to you really quick? What are you doing? Just come with me. Just what are you doing? We're in the middle of an interview. I understand. What are you doing? Uh, Josh, come with me, please. This is my job. Hello, everybody. Tom Thomas here, and I am very sorry.
Turquoise, as far as we can tell, was first mined in the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt many thousands of years ago, perhaps as many as seven or 8,000 years ago. The traditions turquoise has in ceremonies could be in healing ceremonies, protection ceremonies, um, puberty ceremonies. They're in mostly, they're in most ceremonies. Non-native people in many parts of the world use turquoise and use a lot of turquoise. One of the places that turquoise is very important is in Tibet. And uh, the Tibetans often use turquoise and coral together. And for them, it stands for the sky. But turquoise is also very important in the Middle East, where it is used on a lot of decorative objects, a lot of jewelry. And it's used in South America, both in sacred and non-sacred objects. So turquoise can be found in many parts of the world. It almost always forms in arid regions. So some of the places where it is mined today include China. There are still mines in Iran, which used to be called Persia. And there are still some mines in the United States that are operating. Most of those are in Arizona. Uh, turquoise is found in an area where it's dark, I mean, where it's a desert, dry kind of place. And then um, you have to have the water flowing over the minerals in order to get those deposits on it. Once they find that, then they take that stone out and um, they sell it to a jeweler and he will cut it into the very size and shapes that he wants to have it done. And then he'll turn it into probably cabochons. And ca cabochons means um, a round or an oval stone that has a kind of a dome shape to it. When turquoise is incorporated into jewelry, sometimes it can symbolize wealth, healing, protection. I guess it just depends on how you wear it. That's one of the uh, beauties of turquoise is that it has this ability to pull those ideas and those idioms out of people and they use it as a form of expression and a way to, uh, to how would you say it, um, express what it is they're feeling through this, this object that was produced over millennium within the earth. Turquoise is kind of like um, is graded like diamonds. You know, you can have a really inexpensive diamond and then you go clear up depending on how clear uh, and how a diamond is cut. That's the same way with turquoise. Well, turquoise will cost more than something ha that has been um, enhanced. And when they enhance the stone, they usually mix it with some kind of epoxy or something. And sometimes they will dye it or color it, so it just depends. There's a lot of turquoise out there on the market that is uh, purely plastic but it's still real and it's still turquoise because if you can touch it and taste it and look at it, then it's real. People would hang some turquoise near the entrance to their house because of the protective powers and Europeans also believed in the protective powers of turquoise. And one of the ways we may see that today is in the habit of painting windows and doors in traditional southwestern architecture, blue, green, or turquoise colored because of that's going to avert any danger or help ward off any danger. Turquoise is one of the key elements. It represents me paying my mortgage, feeding my kids. You know, it, it's my livelihood. It's, uh, it's what my entire life is uh, surrounded by. It's, it's the medium through which I express my, my passion and my, and you know, it gives my life purpose and it enables me to live the dream, if you will. My grandfather used to have the most beautiful turquoise bracelets and rings uh, and he, he wore them all the time. And the only time he ever took them off was when he washed his hands. Um, turquoise means protection and healing. Turquoise is like people. It comes in all different colors and qualities. I have learned to love the stone more. Now when I look at it, I think about all of the meaning of it. I think of all of the various shades of it. And I'm very happy to wear it. 